coffee time! This is a kind of vloggy video before I start doing the other Chronodex videos. Uh, myself, Carrie Harling, Miss Vicky B have been playing with visual time clocks uh, of your day. So things like, let me find a day, hang on a minute. Goodness me. Things like this. There are a million and one different versions of this available. Somewhere, somehow, there will be one that suits you, that works for how you want it to work, and so on. This at the bottom, this big one, is the original Chronodex, and it starts out life looking like that. It's just got yellow on it because that's a, an appointment in advance. This is for Thursday. <clears throat> uh, and you colour in the segments. I'm going to show you how to do that. And you can you know, build up your time. You can see where your time is. You can organise your appointments. You can organise your multitasking. All sorts of things. It is a brilliant system, I have to say. Uh, me and the Chronodex have never got on. <laughs> um... I did spend quite a lot of time talking to the creator of the Chronodex, Patrick Ung, who is a lovely guy. If you have any issues with the Chronodex, I mean, he's incredibly busy, but if you contact him and talk to him about it, or you uh, contact him through his page or whatever, he will get back to you and tell you, you know, this is how this works, or this is how that works, or whatever. He has promised, he has promised to do a video on the Chronodex on how he uses it. Because he doesn't do any of this colour coding stuff, he does everything in black, which is just fascinating for me. I don't even understand how he does that. But um, he has said he will do a video at some point. But like I say, he's an incredibly busy man. I, I have no idea when he's going to get to do that video. Uh, in the meantime, I have taken his advice on how it works and I've tried to put it into practice. Now... I'm going to do a video on how I colour it in, that will be separate, okay? Uh, I'm going to show you both this version and this version, which is my own version, and I will talk to you about that separately. I am currently using this for logging my time. I don't really use it for appointments as such, because I don't need appointments in advance, but when I do have an appointment, I colour it in in yellow like that. So I know that that time is booked. And again, if you want to see how I multitask with it, check out the colouring in video that I actually talk you through how I colour one in. The way I'm using it is the colours on here are represented by the colours on here. And I'll spin you around in a minute and talk you through how the colours match up and all that kind of thing. Reasons you might want to use a visual kind of mappy type thing are, well, hold that thought. If you are a visual person and you like to look at something and you, you can immediately see that is that and that is that and that is that, then I can, I can, I can see you really enjoying the Chronodax. Or you people who like to colour code everything to within an inch of its life, you may enjoy using a Chronodex. And when I say Chronodex, I'm blanket terming that into, I'm talking the Chronodex original, I'm talking Kemp from Aussie's Spiral Dex, which is a version of it that it's a, it's a bit prettier. There is Sarah Ping's version, which she laughingly calls the Pingadex, which is similar to the Spiral Dex, but it's got no times on. There is another one by Kate, uh, Kate the Artist, who has done a very simple version of a Chronodex. There is uh, a Romadex, which is my version, <laughs> which I'll talk to you about separately. Uh, that's, that's not my name for it. it, I just call it a clock, but uh, Carrie has started using it and she's calling it a Romadex. So <laughs> uh, I, will talk, I will do a completely separate video on that one uh, because that is 
completely separate. <laughs> uh, that is what has developed out of me using the Chronodex. What I can tell you from my experience of the Chronodex, as a creative person, I absolutely love being able to see where I've multitasked. I can see when I've spent time in the studio, when I've been working on personal time, when I've been doing work in my personal time, when I've been doing personal stuff in my studio. Uh, I can see, you know, am I regularly WALKing the DOGSs who are over there at the moment? There's Miss Maddie. Miss Maddie. There's Miss Maddie. Oh, she's having a nap. Look. Hello, Miss Maddie. And there's Mr. Scooby. Hello, Scooby Doo. <laughs> They're very quiet today. Dipsy's in the other room, hiding from the camera, of course. Uh, yeah, I can see at a glance. I don't have to. I don't have to think, and that's what I like about visual planning. I don't have to think. I don't have to look at it and read six ways from Sunday what it was I was doing or when something is or what's going on I don't like reading okay I'm lazy basically let's let's put it that way I'm lazy I, if I don't have to read I won't if I have the choice between reading a book and listening to an audiobook I will choose the audiobook every single time I hate subtitles I don't I, I'm not a reader okay I just don't I like writing but I'm not a reader but to look at something and see a block of colour and go, ah, that's when that was, that I love. Now, this will become more apparent in my colouring the Chronodex video because I'm going to show you how I've been using it for my current work and how I would have used it if I had, I'll call it a nine to five job, but it's not really nine to five, a regular work. OK, if you go to work at a particular time every day or you have particular shifts that you work on a rolling basis, the Chronodex would work for you easily. The problem I had with it personally is that uh, you can probably see here. Let me just find a page to compare. Right, this is... I don't have one that's blank. I'm going to have to use these two again. So pretend this is blank. Pretend there's no yellow on it. That's just for, I've got an appointment between one and three on Thursday. So I can't do anything else during that time. So to make sure that I don't book anything and double book myself, I've coloured that in in advance. That's all it is. So pretend there's no yellow on this one. That's what it starts out looking like. If you were like me and you regularly have times when you don't sleep, this is what happens. It turns into what Carrie calls a hot mess. <laughs> uh, and it doesn't even give me the information that I wanted. It doesn't... Once I get outside of the basic Chronodex, which is here, at 9pm, you run out of room to put anything that is multitasking. So in order to multitask effectively, I would have to have another two rings outside of this. And that's not for me. I don't want a system where I'm constantly having to draw on extra boxes because there's not enough time. Now, I do realise that I am an exception to the rule, okay? I had two days here where I think in a 48 hour span, I slept for about three hours. I had a two hour sleep there. And I had two half hour naps where I just I fell asleep and I woke up. Before anybody starts lecturing me on how, oh, you're not getting enough sleep, you're not doing this, you're not doing that, or telling me how I can help sleep and blah, blah, blah. I am not an insomniac, OK? I just don't need to sleep very much. And I don't really know how it works, but my body, if I have too much sleep one day, I don't need any sleep the next day. Um, it's not something I do. I don't deliberately sleep one day to stock up unless I know I'm going to be, you know, if I'm going to be out and about one day and it's going to be a really long day and blah, 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 I'll, you know, I'll go to bed early the night before. Doesn't everybody. But I don't regularly stock up on sleep. But for instance, on the second, you can tell by my Chronodex, this was not a very busy day. What on earth was going on? I didn't do anything this day. I didn't even make it to a full 24 hours. 
to a full 12 hours. Why didn't I make it to a full 12 hours? Well, I've written it on here. I went to bed at 8 p.m. because I had a migraine. On the third, I didn't do anything. I, I didn't even write in my journal. <laughs> I came back to it the following day and went, oh, migraine. Skull and death, what does she take? Um, so, basically, if I sleep, and my parents will tell you this, that I've been like this since I was a baby. It's not something that's happened later in life. I've always been like this. If I sleep for more than four hours at a stretch, I'm sick, or I'm getting sick, or I'm just getting over being sick. So to go to bed at 8 p.m., sleep right through the next day on and off, well, I spent the day in bed with a migraine, and most of it sleeping. And then, on the next day, to have another day like that, where I, again, didn't make it through 12 hours, that's me being sick. I, if I'm sick, I sleep. Unfortunately, having had three days where I basically slept for 48 hours in one go, I then had a night where I had a full day, I made it through all 12 hours and then I had six hours sleep. I had another day where I made it through all 12 hours and I had six hours sleep. And then my body went, hang on a minute, we've got too much sleep going on here. And then I spent 48 hours not sleeping other than an occasional nap when my body just shut down and I said, OK, I'm tired now, I'm going to have a nap. Here, I actually went to bed. Nine o'clock, I was really tired and I went to bed. Two hours later, I was up and at them, you know, and I didn't, you know, that's not like, oh, I woke up and I didn't want to be awake. I mean, I woke up and I was like, right, OK, I'm awake now. Off we go. Let's go do something. Like I say, I'm not an insomniac. For me, an insomniac is someone who goes to bed and is tired and wants to sleep, but can't. I'm just somebody who doesn't need a lot of sleep. I had two hours sleep, I was fine. If I sleep for more than four hours at a time, that's a, that's a good night's sleep for me. So, what, unfortunately, like I was saying, getting back to the subject at hand, sorry, I just wanted to explain because... When you say you don't sleep, people assume you're an insomniac and start lecturing you about how you're not getting enough sleep and how you should have more sleep and how you can get more sleep. Believe me, I've tried everything. Uh, they actually gave me sleeping tablets at one point and they had no effect whatsoever. <laughs> None. And I don't even drink coffee. When I drink coffee, this is decaf. The only time I drink full strength coffee is if I'm out. This is, all I drink is decaf. I don't have caffeine. I don't drink cola. I d well, I do drink cola, but I drink caffeine-free cola. You know, nothing makes any difference. I've always been like this. I got a lot of studying done in university because I was up for 48 hours at a time. Everybody else just before exams was like, oh no, I'm, I'm popping the caffeine pills because they needed to study and then they were getting three hours sleep and they needed to study some more, but they weren't awake. And I'm like, yeah, I, I slept for an hour yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when you get to this stage where you are a 24-hour person, or even if you are the kind of person who works shifts that they may swap between day and night, that is when the chronodex gets confusing. Now, I did, as I said, spoke to Patrick Ng. I never say his name right. I'm so sorry, Patrick, if I'm butchering your name. Uh, I spoke to Patrick and... I said to him, the problem I've got with the Chronodex is it's not 24 hours. And he said, uh, the new one is. So I went and got a new one. The old ones only started here and went round once and back up to the 12. So it was 18 hours. It went from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight. He has a new one which goes from 12 midnight here right the way round back up to 12 midnight there. So it is a 24 hour clock. However, the little boxes, again, 12 till nine being tiny little boxes and nothing after midnight here assumes that A, you go back, you go to bed before 12 o'clock every day and B, between 12 a.m. and 9 a.m. or 12 midnight and 9 a.m. 
you're doing things that are not required to be multitasking or whatever, maybe you're asleep or whatever, you know, you, your personal time, having a shower, that kind of thing. Again, that doesn't work for me. Just doesn't. So, because the reason it doesn't work for me is because quite often t between 12 and 5 a.m. is when I'm working. I work, I, you know, that is my, between, after 10 o'clock is my awake time. When I'm alert and I'm, I can do stuff. Afternoon, mid-afternoon, it's, 10 to 3 now. I've already done one video today for a class. This is my second one. I've got two more to do. So sort of between 2 and 6 is my ideal filming time. I'm alert. I can talk about stuff, but I don't have to be doing anything. I can, you know, I'm up and awake and personable. It's daylight for a change. <laughs> and filming is... And I can film, so I'm, I'm conscious enough to film. But I'm not necessarily conscious enough to be doing accounts or working on fine artwork or, you know, something like that. First thing in the morning, by contrast, I am not creative. I am not feeling like I want to be doing anything particularly. So that is my time when I sit and listen to audiobooks or I take the puppies out or I do my housework. It's not an ideal time for creating. Um, What's her name? Nikki. Nikki. I don't know if it's on her at home with Nikki or at work with Nikki channel, but she has a video on how to be productive at different times of the day. And she recommends uh, knowing when your sparkle time is. She calls it her sparkle time when she is awake and creative and ready to go. And my sparkle time is between 10 p.m. and about 3 a.m. So between 3 a.m. and 5 a.m. I tend to be doing planner stuff. I'm winding down from the day. I'm working in my journal. I might be editing a video, stuff like that. But if I'm doing creative things, uh, particularly if I'm doing artwork, it will be between 10 and 3. It's a lot to explain, but I don't work like normal people and I don't want people to assume that I'm getting up at, at 7 a.m. and I'm doing stuff and then I go to bed about midnight or 12. I don't. And I think it's important to explain that because most people don't work like that. <laughs> so I kind of have to explain that to put it in context as to why this doesn't work. And this hot mess is why it doesn't work. Because of that hot mess, I have developed my own version. As I say, I'm going to do a different version video on this to explain it. This is a 24 hour version and I'm much happier with it. I'm going to make a few more tweaks and do a couple of different alternative versions before I release it into the ether. It will be available as a free download. It is actually based on somebody else's work and I have permission from them to use it so I will put all that information in the blog post and video that I do specifically on that one. So that's my introduction to the Chronodex. Like I said, I'm going to do a separate video on how I actually fill it in. And I will walk you through how I've filled in this one. Uh, possibly not this one, because this is, a, like I say, this is a hot mess. Even I find it confusing. But maybe one where I didn't have quite so much going on. Maybe one of my 12-hour days where I was a bit, <laughs> a bit less manic. Um, this might be a good one actually because that's that's an 18 hour day but not too much going on so that might be a good one to show you and I will talk you through how I'm using it in my planner and how I find it visually easy to see what's going on without having to write an awful lot because like I say I'm a creative person I would rather colour in than write and that's just how I prefer to do my planning. So come and join me in the next video where I walk you through how this works. <laughs>